All right, this is Norval Central coming back at you in the YouTube video. And I have Jay over here with me with no highlights. Uh, like I said, he did the Cheese It preview with us last time. And it was a very interesting conversation, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy, man. <laughs> man, how did you think about the game? Man, I'm going to put it like this, man. I, I was sick. I'm still sick now, but I was I was doing bad when I was watching the game. Yeah. Being sick and watching the game at the same at the same time, yeah, man, it was a little stressful. But we we made it through it and we got that dub, so we, I'm good now. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely closer than we expected because I wasn't expecting a three point ball game. So, <laughs> but uh, we'll go ahead and kind of get into the news lately. Uh, Florida State's been kind of in the news in a very very good way. Uh, Jamie Robinson <laughs> actually talked about how he was going to be announcing a huge decision at 11:59. Ended up. Uh, declaring for the 2023 NFL Draft. Uh, what were kind of your thoughts on that? Were, were you excited about that announcement for him? Were you surprised? What what kind of went through your head whenever he announced that? Um, I say, man, honestly, I was more excited than anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, that, I know that's kind of weird to say, but yeah. I mean, you know, FSU fans, but yeah, I, I was excited because I wasn't necessarily uh, surprised because I was told. That um that we could possibly it's it sound more 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 like more like we gonna uh, return two out of three yeah all. so um I was thinking like I was thinking like okay so if if that's true I know that one is probably Jamie because he's yeah. the one that played the whole season and it's just like I'm not spilling any news either this is not none of this is not you know uh verify or nothing like that. So it's just opinions and thoughts or whatever. But I, I, I definitely thought that might have been Jamie that would have been, you know, probably the one to go to the NFL. But so I, I, I'm excited for him, man. Yeah, he definitely put his blood, sweat, and tears into Florida State the last couple of years with us because, I mean, you think about it, he coming to the bowl game with 86 tackles, ended up getting that 100 tackles, and uh, Nazardine did it back, I, I believe, was the last last 100, 100 uh tackler so it was very imp impressive to see you know it's been kind of a guy that put just everything into Florida State and at South Carolina and uh, mm -hmm. it kind of speaks to the culture of what Mike Norvell is bringing in terms of transfers we'll kind of go over and talk about another transfer that we had added a couple of years ago he announced that he is staying for the 2023 season and that is Fabian Lovett um, everybody was talking about him kind of not playing in the bowl game he actually had a procedure that was done so he wasn't really able to participate in that it's kind of some shocking news for Florida State fans, but nonetheless, man, this is a huge get for Florida State to have him back next season, especially with that defensive tackle room that is kind of inexperienced and not really the greatest in the world right now. I think a lot of those guys are a little bit more younger. What were kind of your thoughts on that so far with him being kind of that defensive leader and then coming back for the 2023 season? Oh, man, like like you say, man, that, that's huge, bro. Just because he, you could tell, like, when, when, he's, when his presence is not on the field, when that defense on, you could tell something just something missing, you know. And I think uh maybe in love, he just provide that leadership, you know, he provide that big dog, you know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. just feel comfortable when he's on the field, man. So that's really huge, man. I really thought, um, I really thought like with him, I like I feel like he can go to the NFL and uh yeah. and you know be like a, a real good player now. I thought that the injury was kind of like that was something to watch for when he, you know, when he got hurt. So I was like, dang. So if he if he got hurt, I don't, I'm not sure that could be something to look out for, you know, when it comes down to the NFL talk. So, but yeah, man, I'm definitely excited that he's returning, man. I love it. I'm ready, bro. I'm ready. So I know that he had talked with the uh, Champions Collective podcast with uh, Brian McFadden that you spent four to say a uh, while back. Uh, and he talked about how if he was actually able to play in those three losses that we had, that Florida State would probably go undefeated or, you know, at least one loss. Um, what what are kind of your thoughts on that? Like, I know it's kind of a polarizing topic with, you know, some fans and everything like that. Maybe maybe everybody doesn't want to jump to that conclusion, but, man, it sure seems like without Fabian Levin on the field, it seems like our defense was not in the greatest shape. But once he come back, it it, it really turned the tables. Man, I, I agree, man. I um I'm gonna be honest, bro. If those I'm gonna be honest, those three games, I think it would have been I really think those three games would have really been uh I think we would at least pull one at least. Yeah. I think we would have at least pulled one because the um 
specifically the NC State game. I really think we would have got that one at least because <clears throat> they was kind of hurting us in the um they was kind of hurting us in the um the run game. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's, it's like the scoreboard don't really tell it, but yeah, watching it, they was getting like those three four yards they was getting there per play. Yeah. It was I, it, it hurt just you know being a defensive guy. It hurt just sitting there watching that, but. Yeah, I definitely think we could have at least gotten one of those games. Yeah, and you talk about it. I mean, even the Clemson game with Will Shipley. I mean, I know we had some turnovers in that little bit of like six or seven minute stretch there, but Will Shipley was just coming up the middle later in the game, and it just seemed like it just kept coming. He was four or five yards of carry every single time you turned around. And I mean, you know, you talk about the slow mesh at Wake Forest. I mean, it was the same kind of thing. We weren't able to kind of disrupt that. So Sam Hartman kind of had his day with this. But, I mean, just overall, I mean, Florida State's defense, with him coming back and everything like that, it seems like it's a little bit better. Now, we're still kind of hearing the word from Jared Verse and kind of figuring out that situation. I hope all sources indicate that he is coming back. We'll, we'll see how that goes. I know that defensive line would definitely appreciate it. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about another transfer that we had gotten recently with Ventrell Cypress, uh, the Virginia cornerback transfer. Absolutely locked down this season. Uh, his PFF grades were about 87.8 so far. 13 passes defended. I mean, this guy is a lockdown corner. And you talk about Renato Green. He really stepped up this season. I know you're a big fan of Renato Green. Talk about, like, having that one-two punch with Renato Green and also with uh, Ventrell Cypress as well. Ooh, man. Hey. <laughs> man, that's, hey, that's exciting, bro. That's exciting. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, we had a lot of people, like, um, on social media, mm-hmm. like, t- like, man, like, the one thing that will really cap it off right now is if we let Fritcher outside. Well, we got him now, so I'm excited, man. I, like you say, man, he real locked down, got size. You know, it yeah. just – we DBU, man. It's yeah. – it's you got to – you know what I'm saying? We DBU, so it's only right if we let uh, Fritcher outside. But I'm glad that he's um, with us and not against us now. And, yeah. you know, him and Renato Green just been on the field at the same time. It's going to be something to look forward to, man. I feel that, man. I got two more questions for you. First question I have for you is, with Mike Norvell, with his success in the transfer portal, he has added a ton of talent to guys so far. What position do you think he needs to go ahead and get after on the transfer portal, or do you think he kind of needs to be done in that realm of the transfer portal so far? Um, I think I think with – I think the next position – this is me, my opinion. Mm-hmm. I feel yeah. – I would go after probably another defensive end in the portal. Yeah. Um, and probably another safety. That would have like- also been mine as well. I I just don't know. And I, I know that like when spring comes through and like players start entering again and everything through the window, I wonder if with Jared Verse coming in, will they kind of be done in that situation? Um, and also on the safety position, you don't really know what Shaheen Brown, if he's going to be able to step up in that starting role, you just don't really know, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, yeah, I got one more question for you. So, basically the ACC right now, Clemson is kind of the cream of the crop. They've been winning uh, ACC championships for quite some time. They've won, I think, seven out of the last eight ACC championships. And Florida State really hasn't beat them since 2014. We talk about the Jameis Winston suspension, you know, the Carlos Williams touchdown at the end to to win an overtime there in a packed out Doe Campbell Stadium. You know, it's been such a long time since we've been able to kind of compete with the likes of Clemson. Now, the last couple of years, we've been able to do that. It's been closer scores and it's been more respectable. Do you think Florida State is more closer to achieving that goal of being not really beating Clemson, but being in the same conversation as them now, considering how much we've kind of improved our roster. Oh yeah, I, I definitely think the uh, the gap is starting to slim up a little bit. Yeah, I, um, I would say this too. I do believe, I do believe with Dabo, and I hate speaking mm-hmm. on uh, yeah. their team. I, I do believe uh, Dabo is kind of like shooting himself in the foot, being that mm-hmm. I know. Well, last time I checked, he wasn't a real big fan of the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. I do think I think he can save himself if he decide he want to like start. You know, he got he got the game is changing, man. I feel like if he yeah. starts with it, I do believe he can save himself. But man, as long as he you know decide he don't want to uh you know get out of that you know that old school way. Yeah. Man, I think that gap will continue to close, and I think we gonna take over, man. I think we gonna take over. 
Yeah, and I believe like he's only signed one transfer, like Paul Tyson, a quarterback used to play at uh, Arizona State. And I mean, it, he really hasn't utilized it. So, I mean, I'm not saying that transfer portal should be utilized every single time. And I'm not also saying that you can't win with it because we saw and, TCU win at an effective rate and they had 14 transfers. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I think Florida State is closing that gap. I still think they want to recruit heavily at the high school ranks. But, you know, like I said, if the transfer portal is working right now, you're getting guys multiple eligibility. I mean, why not? You know, not. I mean, they're just sitting there. You got basically 40 percent of the top 10 transfers in terms of on three of the prospects coming in. I mean, that's huge. I mean, it, you're not just taking just developmental guys that are just, you know, doing whatever at this point. Um, last question for you, and I'll, I'll let you go. Um, how'd your how'd your uh, last YouTube video go? I know I know that you uh, had posted that out there and everything like that. <laughs> it took it took forever to uh, get it recorded because I had I managed to get sick. So mm-hmm. when I was the video, <clears throat> I left like the first part. You can see it was daytime. Yeah, yeah. and I, I was yeah. And fifteen minutes, matter of fact, while I was <laughs> it was a little part in there while I was talking to the dog. Yeah. And probably like five minutes before that, my throat, like I started feeling my throat started like mm-hmm. getting scratchy a little bit. Yeah. It took like a whole week to record it because I was struggling, like, trying to get over this cold or whatever. So, yeah. But at the least, man, it, it, it turned out pretty good, man. Hey, man, that's great, man. I'll make sure to uh, link both of your videos. I know I linked the last one in there, but I'll link both of them this time so that way both of them can check out both of them in case they missed the first one. But Man, it's been a pleasure, as always, talking to you about Florida State. And like I said, if you ever want to come back on, just let me know, okay? I got you, bro. Appreciate it, man. All right, man. What well, Everyone, this has been Norvell Central uh, with no highlights and everything like that. I really appreciate all the love and support. And as always, go Noles. Go Noles.